Okay, in this video, we're solving equations with radicals. Uh, like the other problems, or the other examples, uh, this follows along with the worksheet that you should be able to find with the video. Alright, here we go, and I'm doing the odd ones again. Okay, uh, in this one, we have a radical equal to a number. Uh, what we want to do is we're going to square this to get rid of the radical. Um, the problem with that is we're changing the domain. And whenever you change the domain of an equation, the answers you get may turn out to be invalid. Even if you do everything correctly, uh, the answers might be bad. Okay? So, uh, so for every one of these problems, we are going to check the answer, whether we do it by inspection, like I'll do it in my head, and hopefully I'll remember to explain it out loud. All right, so here we go. So what we're going to do here is square both sides. So I'm going to take this equation and square both sides. Remember, when you square a radical, the radical simply goes away. So we get x plus 5 equals 4. So x equals negative 1. I'm going to check the answer. To check the answer, I just simply plug it into the original. So it's negative 1 plus 5. Is that equal to 2? Well, that'd be 4. That's 2. So it ends up, yes. So x equals negative 1 is an acceptable answer. Let's do another one. Okay. Um, one of the things you want to do when you solve these, or when you, or right before you square them, you want to isolate the radical as much as you can. This plus 10, if I were to square it now, it's going to prove to be a royal pain. So what we're going to do is move it over to the left. So I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. When I subtract 10 from both sides, I get 1 equals square root of 3 minus x. So I've moved the 10 to the left, subtracting it. Okay. Now when I square it, I won't have this 10 to encumber things. So when I square it, I get 1 equals 3 minus x. Just in case something... Ah, anyway, all right. I square it and I get that. Solve that for x. I get negative 2 equals negative x, so x equals 2. Check your answers again. Here, 3 minus 2 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 10 is 11. In case you missed that, plug it in. Remember, this is a question of equality. We don't know if it's equal. 1 plus 10? Yes. It turns out. Now, I'm not going to work out every problem like that. I don't know. Maybe I should. Go on to the next one. In the next problem, we have a radical on both sides. That may actually look more complicated, but number 5 actually turns out rather nicely. Okay, I'm going to square both sides. When I square both sides, I get 2v plus 11 equals 2 minus v. Then it's a normal algebra problem. Move the v to the left, subtract 11 from the right, and I get 3v equals negative 9, so v is negative 3. We check it. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, plus 11 is 5. So the left side turns out to be square root of 5. 2 minus negative 3 is 5. So right-hand side turns out to be square root of 5. So that one works. Okay. Um, in case you can't follow my verbal descriptions, see if you can figure out how I got square root of 5 equals square root of 5. All right. Going on to number 7. Square root of 8. Again, we have radical equal radical, so we're just going to square both sides. A over 4 equals 50 minus A. I'm going to add A to the left. Right? When I, here, let me write it out. I'm adding A to the left. Those of you who are fraction phobes, I'm going to rewrite this A as 4 over 4A. Four over four is the same as one. That's one a. 
Uh, what I've done is rewrite it with a common denominator. So that becomes 5 fourths A. Right, keeping in mind, that's like a 1 fourth. Now I'll solve this. I'm going to multiply by 4 fifths. That comes what, 40? All right, so let's check it out. I'll plug it in this time. I'll go through the process because, like you, sometimes fractions give me problems. <laughs> okay. Left side, 40 over 4 is 10. 50 minus 40 is 10. Okay, it worked. That's number 7. And I lost all my paper. No, here we go. All right, number 9. This looks the same. Why don't you pause it and try it? Okay. Square both sides. You get negative 1 minus p equals 3p plus 11. I'm going to move the p to the right and 11 to the left. So that'll be 4p. What's that? Negative 12. So p equals negative 3. Plug it in. That's going to be negative 1 minus negative 3, giving me 2. And this is going to be negative 9 plus 11, giving me 2. So square root of 2 equals square root of 2. So that worked. Number 11. Now this one is actually a little more interesting. Now you might think, oh, it has one less radical. It's easier. Well, what happens when you square that P? Mm. Well, you're going to get p squared. So that means now you're going to have a now you have a quadratic to solve. So we have a quadratic to solve. General rule of thumb: you have any kind of exponent, move everything to one side. That's not always true, but it's going to be true for this worksheet. So I'm going to move everything to the right. So negative p becomes plus p. Positive 56 becomes negative 56. So now it becomes a factoring problem. P squared is P and P. What are the factors of negative 56 that combine to make a positive one? Be plus 8 minus 7. The zero property of multiplication says if two numbers multiply together, the two numbers are P plus 8, P minus 7, and it equals zero, then one of them has to be zero. So we set each of them equal to zero. And then solve. So P equals negative 8, P equals 7. Make sure to check both of them. Plug in negative 8 back here. Ooh, I'm going to actually go through the process here. 56 minus P is that. Okay, I'm just copying the problem. All right, plug in the negative 8 and get 56 minus negative 8. Is that equal to negative 8? Well, here, I'm going to stop right there. The square root. Remember, whenever we take the square root, it's always the principal square root. And the principal square root will never be equal to negative 8. Okay, it's never equal to negative eight. So I'm going to reject negative eight from right from right there. Reject. Plug in seven. Fifty-six minus seven. Is that equal to seven? What's that? Forty-nine. Yep, it's true. Seven equals seven. So my final answer, number eleven, is p equals seven. Okay. Remember, you can always, if I go too fast, you can always rewind and watch it again. And you should complain that I'm talking too fast. <laughs> All right. That way, maybe I'll slow down. Number 13. Again, square both sides. So, square that. Square that. So, it'll be b squared equals negative 7 plus 8b. Move everything to the left. B plus 7 equals 0. Factor. This one's easy. B, B. What are the factors of 7 that combine to make negative 8? Well, negative 7, negative 1. So B minus 7 equals 0. B minus 1 equals 0. B equals 7. B equals 1. Okay. Well, checking those. Plug it into the original. Remember, the original was this. 
don't plug it into the squared version, okay? It was squaring that changed the domain, so don't plug it into the squared version. Plug it into the original version. So 7, negative 7 plus 8 times 7. Remember, this is a question. Uh, what is that? That's 56. So I'll square root 49, and that worked out. Okay, plug in the 1. Is it equal to negative 7 plus 8 times 1? Sorry. Yep. Both worked. So, <coughs> excuse me. Both are solutions. Moving on. Ooh, these are starting to take up a lot of space. Number four, number 15. All right. Um, I'm also starting to run out of time. Uh, we'll go ahead and do this one real quick. Uh, this is very similar to the ones we've just done. If you want to pause the video and try it on your own, now is a good time. Pause! Okay, now we're back. Square both sides. You get negative 35 plus, is that a 12? I can't read my own handwriting. Okay. And square, move everything to the right. And square minus 12 and plus 35, and that's equal to zero. What are the factors of that? The combined. What are the factors of 35 to combine to make negative 12? Well, how about 7 and 5? Yeah, these are kind of easy factoring problems. I wonder if they're going to get them more interesting. I don't know. I need to quit babbling because I'm almost out of time. All right, n minus 7 equals 0, n minus 5 equals 0, n is 7, and n is 5. Check them out. Square root of negative 35 plus... 12 times 7, is that equal to 7? So what's that? 84? Is that right? 7 times 2 is 14. Carry the 1, 7, 84. 85 minus 35. I'm sorry, 84 minus 35. It's going to be 9. 7 minus 3 is 4. Square root. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yep. Plug in the 5. See if that works. 5 plus 12 times 5 is that equal to 5? That's 60. Uh -huh. 25 square root of 25. What do you think? Yep. It works. Okay. Uh, the time limit on these videos is about 15 minutes, so I'm going to stop right here. Uh, I'm going to do the rest of the problems on the next video. Okay?